Okay, here we go again. I'll leave a link to this video in my description. Let's get into it. A good martial artist does not become tense, but ready. Not thinking, yet not dreaming. Ready for whatever may come. But some fighters are dumb enough to ignore the legendary Bruce Lee's words. Like Hercule Satan, the world martial arts champion. And Dan Habiki, the Psycho Street Fighter. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The Earth was in danger, the future of mankind threatened by a monster named Cell. All would be lost unless a hero could best him in the ring of Shaq. <laughs> Lay on the shoulders and afro of one man, Hercule Satan. Yeah, we're screwed. Officially, Mr. Satan is the world martial arts champion and chosen savior of humanity. Or so he would have you believe. Hey, if I could lie that well, I'd make everybody think I'm king of the world, too. Or even... God. <laughs> but before he was the hero of the people, Mr. Satan went by... Mark. Eager to learn, Mark sought to master the art of combat. Young Mark honed his skills in the dojo Satan castle, which sounds awesome! But sadly, no, he was not actually trained by the devil. I looked it up. Turns out he was naturally gifted in martial arts, mostly due to his strangely good luck. Yeah, like when he won his first world championship after his rival got food poisoning. That's not suspicious at all! Victory in hand, Mark took the stage name Mr. Satan in honor of his dojo and to sound better for the cameras. His victories and explosive personality quickly rocketed him to a life of wealth, fame, and luxury. Which almost came to an end when he and his master got drunk and made fun of some random guy's ponytail. Turns out this random guy just so happened to be a super-powered immortal mercenary who then murdered his master. Remember, kids, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words should never be used against a tree-surfing murderer. From that day forward, Mr. Satan swore he would never fight anyone whose identity was a secret or who seemed out of his league. Seemed to forget about that when Zell showed up. Anyway, somewhere along the line, Mr. Satan married a lady named Miguel, and after a round or two in the ovarian ring, had a daughter. Oh, and then his wife died. Wow, come on, Boomstick, show some tact. <clears throat> Despite his grief, Mr. Satan never let his loss interrupt his lifestyle. He filled the hole in his life the only way he knew how, with more martial arts. He mastered techniques like his dynamite kick and megaton punch. Which sounds like they would make you explode or something epic like that. Punches. <laughs> he really only named them so he could scream awesome words while fighting. Hey, this is anime after all. I feel more than a little underwhelmed by this guy right now. Well, Mr. Satan's techniques were enough for him to legitimately win the 24th World Martial Arts Tournament, becoming the champion of the world and chosen savior to battle Cell. But we already know how that went. <laughs> <laughs> I could watch that over and over. In fact, <laughs> get away from me, bitch. Mr. Satan actively avoids fighting those who clearly outclass him, mostly to save his own reputation. The first time he saw people flying and shooting beams from their hands, he thought it was a bunch of cheap tricks and pyrotechnics. Even after seeing the most epic Kamehameha beam struggle of all time, he still denied everything. It's a trick. It's all a trick, I swear. Someday I'll bring it all to life. But just in case he finds himself in over his head, Mr. Satan is packing an assortment of capsules containing jetpacks, disguised explosives, and even missile launchers. Man, if those existed in real life, it would be a TSA nightmare. If there's anything he's good at, it's public performance. He often weasels his way out of dangerous scenarios with lame excuses like making stomach aches, and somehow the entire world buys his crap every single time. I did it! For years, I've been trying to perfect a variation of the Megaton Punch that uses latent energy to cause a delayed reaction to catch my opponent off guard! Yeah! When in doubt, work the crowd. I love all of you! Who are you talking to? Every single one of you. Like and subscribe! Mr. Satan is a master of deception, an excellent actor, 
and a complete fraud. Still, he is strong enough to rip three phone books in half and pull four buses by himself, and once he actually moved faster than the untrained eye can see, but forgot bullets move fast too. Well, if I have to say something nice about the guy, at least he's not Yamcha. Mr. Satan has won the World Martial Arts Tournament upwards of 26 times, although only one of them was legitimate. Yeah, the other times he rigged it by having Mr. Boo kick everyone's ass and then lose to him on purpose. Still, it's pretty impressive he managed to befriend one of the most dangerous and untamed monsters in the Dragon Ball universe. Oh, and one time he convinced the whole world's population to stick their hands up in the air and then wave them around like they just don't care, but whatever. Boomstick that saved the world. Eh. Mr. Satan is motivated by three things. Money, fame, and his daughter who he seems to prize above all else. He may be a bit of a con artist, but no matter what he's up against, Mr. Satan still finds a way to rise above his fears through his own bravery. Wait, did I just say bravery? I meant thick-headedness and straight-up stupidity. Conceptualized in retaliation of SNK's blatant ripoff of Capcom's characters, Dan Hibiki was always meant to be a complete joke. Dan had no natural talent in fighting people, but his father, Go Hibiki, was a martial arts master with his own dojo. One day, Go's dojo was visited by Sagat, an enforcer of the crime syndicate Shadowly. As an advocate of justice, Go refused to be intimidated by the crime lord and stood up to him the only way he knew how. By kicking his freaking eye out, then Sagat brutally beat him to death in front of his own son. That should teach you to mess with a 7 foot 4 Muay Thai monster. It didn't. Enraged and distraught, Dan swore he would avenge his father's death. To do so, he sought out a legendary dojo hidden in the wilderness of Japan. This thing is more elusive than child support to my ex. Seems like the more time we spend here, the questions arise. Yeah. Like, who the hell's dad? Against all odds, Dan found it. He was trained by its master, Goken, the same mentor who taught Ryu and Ken such legendary techniques as the Hadoken and the Shoryuken. Dan began the he <laughs> as a weapon of justice. Until Goken expelled him because he just, just sucked. Well, technically it was because Goken didn't want his training only used for revenge, but let's face it, he knew he was wasting his time. However, Dan's determination for vengeance continued. He took the little he had learned from Goken and ironically combined it with some Muay Thai. This became his very own martial art, the Psycho Ryu fighting style. Unfortunately, while that sounds awesome, it didn't really work out. Dan's fighting style is, well... It sucks. It's awful. There's absolutely nothing redeemable about it. I mean, he can use special moves like the Koryuken and the Dan Kumiyaku. Which are like the dollar store versions of awesome stuff like the Shoryuken and Tetsu, uh, whatever it's called. Also, Dan Kukiaku? Did he seriously name one of his moves after himself? Yeah, he's pretty full of himself. Which is why the Psycho style's strongest technique is excessive taunting. He can taunt while jumping, somehow increasing his air time. And by focusing all his energy at once, Dan can perform a taunt so fearsome, it will shock and amaze all who witness it just by being the most worthless thing they've ever seen. This is the legendary taunt. Here I come! Hola! What's the problem? We don't have to rescue you. I'm awesome! Woohoo! Piece of cake! Now, Dan can manifest his key into a fireball projectile called the Godoku. In a way, the Godokin is symbolic of Dan himself. Yeah, it's tiny, pathetic, and doesn't last very long. Despite this, Dan eventually tracked down his father's killer, and offered to make his left eye match his right. In turn, Sagat politely offered to reunite father and son. The long-awaited clash of fists began, a clash in which Dan was bent on retribution. What? Oh shit, he won? Yes. Dan finally achieved the recompense he had sought for so long and trained his entire life for because Sagat threw the fight in pity. Completely unaware of his luck and now confident he was one of the strongest in the world, Dan founded his own dojo to 
to unfortunately teach other people his worthless martial arts. Thanks to God, not only have you killed this man's father, but you're ruining other kids' lives now, too. You'll be happy to know that not many students actually enrolled in his class. <laughs> Bill and did not include his dojo's address in his commercials. <laughs> Classic Dan. By the way, what's up with the pink key? Well, it was originally white, but then he accidentally washed it with colors. Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, making fun of Dan is fun and all, but let's be honest, he's not a complete pushover. He can take down multiple thugs at once, and even endured a beating from Ryu and Ken simultaneously. No matter how many times he falls, Dan will always get right back up. And remember how Goken rejected him because of his thirst for vengeance? That's because Dan can actually tap into the Satsui no Hado, the evil, deadly energy that transformed Goken's brother Akuma into an island-smashing murderer. We're not joking here. Once Dan did access his Satsui no Hado to use the dreaded Raging Demon, a move which obliterates the victim's soul. Damn! If Dan could do it, I could do it. Alright, watch out, Wes. Here it comes. Ah! Ah! Shit! I fell out of my keys. But more often than not, Dan's a klutz who's overconfident taunting gets him into trouble. He is his own worst enemy. <laughs> but even after Craig like a baby from stubbing his toe, Dan doesn't let any of it keep him down for long. After all, who else will carry on the heroic legacy of Go Habiki? Who do you get? Ah! Oh! Combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, your face is in danger, and only I can save it. If you're like me, blessed to radiate pure manliness, then you know it comes at a price. The price of facial hair stronger than cold steel. It takes a razor made of mithril, forged in dragon fire and quenched in the blood of a unicorn, just to get a close shave. But since those don't come cheap, I'm often left using them until they're worn out and disgusting. Or I just give up and live in scruffy desolation. That is, until I discover DollarShaveClub.com. For just a few bucks a month, they send me a sleeve of quality blades right to my door. Now I'm able to man-sculpt my face at my leisure using a new blade every week. Don't settle for using an overpriced inferior blade for far too long. Join me and millions of others by heading to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash screw attack and sign up right now and choose the razor that's perfect for you. If you won't do it for me, do it for the unicorns. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Training is grueling 
exercise. These pathetic bony cheap shrinks will work on me. Ha! Evolution of my martial art, Ultimate Rocket Booster Psychion Down! Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Only one more capsule left, but I don't remember what's in it. Yo, the film is such a fast. This guy's good. I can't track his movements. Subscribe. Catch y'all later. Peace out.